Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at adding some data to our database. So in our previous video we set up the database and we set up all the extensions that we're going to use for our database. So that's our SQLite server compact connection. You could probably also use the built-in one. Uh, I open it here. SQLite SQL Server Compact Toolbox. Uh, it's also available on View Other Windows down here. I'm also going to be using this right here, Database Browser for SQLite. It's another way to perform the exact same task. And on the right here I have my two tables. I'll close these just to show how I open them. I'm using this edit edit 200 rows so I could manually type in data here if I want but today I want to show how to programmatically add some some sample data so that we can mess around with uh, mess around with our data sets a little bit So the first thing we need to do here would be building those functions that are going to add that data. So I have those pre-built here. I'm just going to walk through high level what's going on with these, these couple of functions. Uh, the most important detail is that connection string. That connection string I have here is going to my database file. And since we're using this lightweight SQL Lite, that's really all we need. We have this beautiful SQL Lite library that handles a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So just with building this connection, using the connection string, which is pointing to that file location which is right here I have this file right here it's pointing to this file I'm able to access the database and then connection open allows me to now interact with it so you do need to do connection open here as well and then everything after that is mostly C sharp code with the exception of the SQL, which we'll cover in a second here. So here I'm just adding, we're going to add to our users table here. So I have, I have uh, four columns. ID gets auto-populated. Uh, if we look at how we built ID for the users table, ID auto-increment, auto-increment. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just going to keep adding a unique number to it. And that is our primary key, which is used for lookups. That's how our database looks up the information. We use that ID. So we don't we don't add to the ID, but we will add a name, email, password, user type. And here we have string arrays. Uh, I have them collapsed here because what's inside them is just sample data. It doesn't really matter. I want to focus on the high level, which is each of these string arrays is of the same size. Otherwise, we're getting an error in our for loop, right? We're going to be indexing into our for loop is indexing into each string array. And if one is a different size than the other, index will be out of bounds. So that's really the only important detail with our string array is that all of them are the same size. So now when we loop through these string array values here, we're always going to have a value there. Next step here is we have this command. The command is how we interact once we've already entered in the SQL database. So you can think of it as we're already inside because we've opened up the connection. Now we are 
going to perform a command inside of the SQL database. So now you can kind of think of it as we're inside here. We're no really, we're no longer really in the .NET C# -sharp framework. Now we are doing our SQL commands here. SQL being just a database programming language specific for databases, which I'm not going to go too heavy into detail in this video here, but we are essentially inside of here once we start interacting with this command. Here's our SQL statement. This is our SQL statement that will add entries to the table here. So we have insert into uh, the table name. These are the column names and then these are the values. That's how we're going to add a new piece of information to our table. And the the at sign with the this variable name here is how we populate this right here we're going to populate this data with the the array value here the reason that we don't put this value in directly right here is to avoid sql injection so it's pretty important to use parameters and add with value. There's another command that I'm struggling to remember off the top of my head, but you can. it's important to add the parameters this way to avoid SQL injection. If you're familiar with SQL, uh, you might want to learn a little bit about pen, pen testing your SQL code and making sure it's immune to SQL injection. But other than that, once we build the command, think of it like we're inside the database, we're not really inside C-sharp, you just run it. Uh, and here this is, uh, we clear the these parameters that we set earlier because we're going to rerun the command with a different set of data. And that's it, that's how we add sample users to our program here. And then I run this function inside my program.cs main function here. So I have a static function, which means I don't need to, I don't need to instantiate a, a an instance. I don't need to create this object. I can just run this function here. And now uh, for my books table here, I want to open up my books table. We're gonna add this from a CSV value, the same CSV value, the same CSV that we were using in my previous application, the book. The book application. We're gonna we're gonna actually inject that data, or inject is not the right word. We're gonna add that data to this this project, and essentially all the same commands. Uh, first thing I do is just check if the file exists. Uh, if not, write to the console. So usually we do a message box, but we're gonna write to the console down here so I don't have to add another using statement keep this file lightweight and then command text parameters all the same uh, here is how we read from a CSV file I've done videos how to read CSV files so if you want to see how to read the CSV file that is all this code right here we skip the first row because that's got all the header information skip the header line and then we pull the values out of this we split on the comma so then each of these become their own own value within the title, author, and genre, and then we populate it. So it's essentially the same. Um, we just take in the CSV path, which I'm sending in as a variable parameter here. Argument, excuse me. Here's my parameter. That's it. That's all it takes to run the, the CSV file into the database. So we can import the CSV file in the database. So without further ado, let's run the code and then take a look at our data. So let's press start here. This will run those two functions inside my program.cs here. Here's the GUI with a bunch of controls that don't do anything yet. And now my data should appear. Same as here, yeah, the data is here. 
So here's the data that we populated with the CSV file. Here's the data that we populated with just raw string arrays. And just a quick refresh, now that, or actually, now that we've populated the database, we can comment those out. We probably won't be using this file much more. Just a temporary file to get some data built in. But yeah, this insert into is a pretty critical SQL statement that we'll be using to add data to our, our program pretty frequently. And yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover in this video. I think we've covered everything. Um, yeah, so um, we have our SQLite here. We got our database SQL, database browser SQLite. Two different ways to view the same data, right? All you do is open the file, just opening that file here, files, library, managed system. Same way that we've uh, assigned it here. And you have two different ways to access your data. Next, we'll look at reading our data and seeing why we're using a database. Because I know we used, a, we used a CSV file earlier. Why do we want to use a database? Well, it's easy to read information from multiple tables and eventually users are going to be checking out books. So we'll have another table that kind of links these two tables and finds a way to, uh, the, the database allows us and gives us the ability to access and find that data very easily. So that'll be for future, but for now, that's all we're going to cover. And I want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.